So suppose you want to make a char siu bao, and you look online, you will see a lot of recipes that look like that's basically char siu inside of a steam bun. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a steam bun, and there's char siu in it. This makes it about seventy percent there, and it's perfectly practical for average home cooks. But if you are as crazy about dim sum and char siu bao as we are, you will notice something that's not quite right. If you get char siu bao at dim sum, they are super pillowy and soft and fluffy. That has this beautiful cracks on it that sometimes referred to as a smiling bun. In short, the doughs not the same. Then you delve into it, trying to separate out the actual char siu bao recipes from other ones, and then as you go deeper, trying to see what actual dim sum chefs use, and along the way, you will find the key to char siu bao. It's something called lao mian. Although early in my char siu bao journey, I remember watching a documentary in which the late dim sum master Chen Fan was talking. The key to char siu bao is balancing alkalinity with acidity, xun gan peng hang. And what he meant by that four simple characters is actually one of the core essence in Chinese bai an white desk. That is using alkaline elements to balance the acidic dough, and in Chao Siu Bao's case, the strong acting alkaline leavening agent is balanced by the acidic odor, leaving you with that characteristic Chao Siu Bao. And if you go down the same obsessive rabbit hole of、uh, for other ultra fluffy Chinese steam goods, you find yourself end up at similar endpoints: Yangzhou Thousand Layer Cake, Lao Mian. Fluffy and flaky southwestern po su bao lao mian, ah、uh, northern mantou lao mian. Even the dim sum sponge cake also needs lao mian. If you love baking, of course, the idea of lao mian, although probably wouldn't be that novel to you, and your head will probably go straight to sourdough. But if you use the western sourdough as the basis for this kind of recipe, the end result will be closerish, but not quite the same. And the difference lies in the Chinese style lao mian. So the microbes in Chinese lao mian and Western sourdough are actually different. In short, Chinese lao mian features recipes and yeast, which often belongs to Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which gives it its strong, fluffy power. While for the Western sourdough, it has a stronger lactic acid bacteria mix to yeast ratio. Which gives it its characteristic tangy flavor that's quite different from a Chinese sourdough. So now we know we need to make lao mian, and how to make it? That is where the question and problem comes from. Because lao mian it's a super super generic term in Chinese. It just means all dough. Especially back in the days, if you look online or in books in Chinese on how to make lao mian. A lot of the sources will just tell you in order to make lao mian, you need to start with a piece of lao mian. It was one of those things that that people who knew how to make it would find it self obvious. The people who didn't, they would just get their lao mian from families or the market. And the people who didn't know but thought that they do would be quick to spout bullshit on the internet. Even H. T. Huang, Huang Xinzhong in Science and Civilizations in China, when he was、uh, researching this stuff from a historical perspective, had similar frustrations because even historically, when starter or lao mian is mentioned, no one bothered to be specific about it. Like Qi Min Yao Shu, it probably has the clearest description, and it got like two sentences. It was a black hole that drove me crazy. Then it wasn't until our video on the flaky, fluffy Anshan baozi from Guizhou that I had a breakthrough. Because when we were traveling around Southwest China, we heard here and there people talking something about making baozi using a starter that's made with lao zao, which is a sweet, mildly alcoholic fermented rice that are made with sticky rice and tian jiu chu, a Chinese herbal yeast ball. Following that lead, I gave the fermented rice wine lao dao a try, and it worked. 
it worked so perfectly. It gave me that perfect texture that I fell in love in Guizhou in the first place. Seven months. Mm -hmm. Seven months of testing. Then from there, the dominoes started to fall. Pillowy dim sum sponge cake, the Lao Zhao activations key, the northern mantle, that too. Once you know what you're looking for, the job becomes so much easier. Now looking back with the hindsight, everything seems obvious. The character for Levin, Jiao. Inside that character, there's a radical for wine. And then in the early 17th century dictionary Zheng Zitong, it defined the character Jiao as using wine as a starter to ferment a dough. It was always there. So in this video, we wanted to share with you how to make this mysterious old dough. And we believe this is probably the first time in the English language, but you never know. However, before we embark on this journey on fermenting rice, making a starter, and then finally making two types of manto, we do need to ask this big question. Is it all worth it? And the answer is probably it depends. Is it worth it to make a sourdough at home? For most home cooks, the answer is probably not. It's a lot of effort for something that's so easy to just purchase outside. A little like that. Lao Mian and this recipe is for the hobbyist. It's for people who love baking and love the fun in the activity and find it intellectually stimulating. Before we begin though, I do want to contextualize this specific method that we are using here because historically there were and are several methods. The first one and probably the oldest one is mixing active rice wine directly with flour to ferment. And until this day, there's still this soft, chewy and spongy rice cake that's made using this method. Method number two, suan jiang or sour batter which is quite similar to the Western sourdough, but it's not too common these days as people are not a big fan of sour baozi. And then there are also methods that mixes flour directly with wine lees or wine yeast. There's also methods mixing some gourd with flour together in order to capture some wild yeast. The one that we'll be doing today is the most common and popular method these days that has an actual starter. And in order to best demonstrate how Lao Mian behaves, I will be doing a straight dough so that you can use this as a base to adjust it according to your own climate, preference, and schedule. But let's make our rice wine first. Uh, so because we've done several videos on how to make fermented rice wine using the steaming method on this channel, so this time I want to go a different route by using a rice cooker that is simpler and quicker. To do so, first just thoroughly watch your rice cooker and its lid, just making sure they are absolutely free of oil. Then take 200 grams sticky rice, rinse it till water is clear, strain, and put it in the rice cooker. Add in about 300 gram water. Now let the rice soak for half an hour. Then press that button and let it cook. When the rice is done, take it out, fluff it up a bit, and let it cool down to 35 degrees Celsius. And after it cools down, we can mix in our rice wine yeast ball. So this is Tian Jiu Chi. Uh, it's usually for sweet rice wine. It's made from a base of uh, from a dozen to more than 30 kinds of herbs. The one I have here, it's something I got from Shaoxing, where the famous Shaoxing wine is from. Uh, on Amazon though, you can also find something that's quite similar to this that's often translated as Shanghai yeast balls. So here's one gram of yeast balls that I shaved out. Press it into powder with the back of your spoon. Mix with one tablespoon of drinking water, sprinkle that onto your rice and mix. If your sticky rice is a bit too sticky, like mine was, just add in a couple more tablespoons of drinking water to loosen it up. Then press it down to firm up a bit, make a hole at the center for breathing and observing. Cover and let it go for 36 hours in a warm place, ideally around 28 to 30 degrees Celsius. So then, 36 hours later, come back. The rice wine should be nice and fragrant. 
press it down, you will see clear liquid coming out. That means the rice wine is ready and we can use it to make our lao mian starter. So the go-to ratio for a Chinese style lao mian is 2 to 1. 2 parts flour to 1 part water. To begin, just take 15 gram water mixed with 5 gram fermented sticky rice wine, half liquid and half rice, together with 30 gram AP. At first, the starter would be on the liquid side, but as you feed it with the 2 to 1 ratio for uh, a couple days, it will start to become this uh, stiff starter that's ready to use. And now let's use it to make some mantel. So to a mixing bowl, add in 45 gram starter, that's 15% in weight to 300 gram flour. Then add in 140 gram water and break up the starter into small pieces. Once the starter is broken up, add in 300 gram AP flour, mix it into this shaggy bit, then get in your hands. But at this stage, we are not looking to develop gluten yet, so just knead and press it into a ball like this. Then cover with a plastic bag, leave it to ferment till it doubles in size. For us, it's 6 hours under 28 degrees Celsius. Okay, 6 hours later, our dough's ready. This kind of fermented dough is called fa mian mian tuan, meaning fermented dough. So fa mian mian tuan is a base for so many kinds of Chinese baos, buns, and cakes. If you see a Chinese bai'an recipe that call for fa mian mian tuan, this is the thing. So today, let's use this fermented dough to show you how to make two kinds of mantou. One basic kind that's eaten alongside a meal as bread, and another cracking sweet type that's often eaten as a snack. Basic one first. Take half of the dough, move it onto your working surface, add in a quarter teaspoon salt, half teaspoon sugar, and then your alkaline component. Now, traditionally, people would use jian mian, sodium carbonate, to balance the acidity of the dough, but I know that jian mian is not something that's readily available in the West, so I've been testing with baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, and it works quite well in this context. As for how much to use, so the general ratio is 0.6% to a properly fermented dough in weight. So this is a 220 gram dough uh, times 0.6% equals 1.32 gram or roughly 3 eighths of a teaspoon if you don't have a micro scale. Now mix the baking soda with 5 gram water and it's ready to use. So first roughly combine the salt and sugar with the dough, then smear some of the baking soda mixture onto the dough and start kneading. Apply the mixture bit by bit until you are finished, and continue to knead till the dough is completely smooth. As for a kneading motion, make sure you smear the dough onto the work surface like this, and then roll it back and smear another bit out again. This motion can help the sugar to dissolve and alkaline mixture to mix in evenly. Otherwise, the alkaline will leave little yellow spotches on an otherwise perfectly white bun. So when the dough is smooth and white like this, weigh and divide into four even pieces. So now take one piece, press down with the end of your palm and fold inwards, just like kneading a mini dough. Once you get a mini ball, just pinch the opening to close. Work through your manto and now we can start proofing. To your steaming vessel with at least 1.5 liters of 30 degrees Celsius water, place your manto seam side down onto a rag with steaming cloth or parchment paper. Then cover and let it proof for one and a half hour. One and a half hour later, come back and check if your manto is ready to steam. Just lightly poke your finger on the bun. If it bounces back gently in two, three seconds, then it's ready. So just take out the steamer. Bring the water to a rapid boil, then carefully put the steamer with mantel back into the pot. Cover and let it steam on high for 8 minutes. And once it's done, shut off the heat and let it sit for 2 minutes before you take it out. And then your classic lao mian mantel is done. Round, fluffy, and full of the fragrance from a fascinating mixture of microbe organisms. Now next, let's show you how to make a flowering mantel, kai hua mantel. 
So Kaihua Mantou is basically the same as the standard basic Mantou. The main difference lies in the final shaping and the addition of at least 20% sugar to help it crack at the end. So just take the remaining half dough, put it on your working surface. Add in quarter teaspoon salt, 30 grams sugar, give it a quick knead to incorporate them first. Then again, start applying the alkaline mixture. Then start the gradual smearing and kneading process just like the regular mantel. Once all the sugar is dissolved and the dough becomes white and smooth, we can start shaping. You can dust the dough if it's a little bit sticky and then we can roll it into a log that's about 20 cm long and then we can split it up. So in order to make it crack, we need to tear them up instead of cutting to create an opening so that air can come out as it steams. So just take the lock, tear it into two pieces with a quick and clean motion at the middle, and then with the same motion, split the two into four pieces. For the two pieces from two ends, simply give them a quick shaping so that the tear faces upward. As for the other two with both ends torn open, Pinch close one side, put it on the work surface to rotate and shape, so that the remaining tear also faces upward. Then place them into your steamer with parchment paper, cover, and proof over 30 degree water, also for one and a half hour. And after that time, take off the steamer. Bring the water to a rapid boil, place the steamer back onto the wok, steam on high for eight minutes, then heat off. Let it sit for two minutes, and then your beautiful flowering mantel is done. So right, this is how you make lao mian. It is something that does need quite some experience with because it's a living organism. You need to observe and work with it in order to know its temper and how it behaves. Like for us, we live in a tropical climate. So all of the time given in the video are for reference only. So when it comes to making your own Chinese lao mian, please be patient and take care of it. And in time, it will reward you with some wonderful fluffiness and amazing tastes. And again, remember to check out the pin notes before you start. Uh, recipes in the description box. And of course, a huge thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon, making this kind of long-term niche project possible. And then, of course, don't forget to subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos. 